Welcome back to the nine. I, I, I couldn't find you. I, you were hiding, but now we did. We're talking Michigan wine, and I tell you, this makes my heart sing. Uh, when, you, when you think about wine, mm -hmm. You don't often think about Michigan. I guess some people do. I mean, I you, you think about cherries. I think, okay, we've got great dessert wines here. Mm -hmm. But Michigan actually has just about everything under the sun when it comes to wine, right? It's, you're absolutely right. Actually, uh, Michigan is now the fourth largest grape growing state in the country. So um, we're here uh, celebrating April Wine Month this month. Uh, the governor's declared April as Michigan Wine Month. That's just to celebrate all the new releases that we have coming out from all the different vineyards across the state. But it's also to celebrate uh, the growth of the Michigan wine industry. Uh, Michigan now, uh, the wine industry is an $800 million business every year. Uh, there's over 100 wineries now across the state. Wow. Uh, producing over a half a million cases of wine every year. By, so. the, by the way, I, this is Patrick Bryce, right? I, <laughs> yes. I didn't introduce you. I'm sorry. I got in here right at the last minute. But uh, so tell us a little bit about the types of, I guess, the variety that you find around the state. Well, uh, Michigan grows uh, whites, reds, you know, dry and sweet. Um, the new releases coming out early in the year are typically the dry wines, so they're going to be uh, the whites. Uh, we've got Chardonnay, Riesling, Pinot Gris, that sort of thing. Um, and so those are, we have a sampling here of the wines from uh, where we're located, Bryce Estate is on Old Mission Peninsula. So if you're not familiar with Old Mission Peninsula, that's uh, just north of Traverse City. So if you visit Traverse City, you can, you know, hit the wine trail and it's a beautiful day to get out and see the taste rooms and the vineyards. So. Now, when you think about the wine producing states, you know, you think of California, you think of Oregon and Washington. Mm -hmm. What is it about, I guess, the climate of Michigan that is similar to those states that are out west? It's, you know, Michigan has its own unique microclimate because of the influence of the Great Lakes. So because of the influence of the water that surrounds Michigan, it makes Michigan the second most diverse state in the country agriculturally. So uh, the first being California. So we can grow more things in Michigan than any other state except California. Wow. So. So if we were to come up north and come see you guys, yeah. I, I, I'm sure there's there's tours up there and wineries that oh, you could actually absolutely. sample all this stuff? Yep. Uh, you can uh, hit the wineries yourself or there's organized groups that take you around. So. Wow. That's uh, having somebody to drive you would be even better. All right, now you brought actually some food to, to do a did. little pairing so I, with this, right? I did, so I thought what we do is a little spring uh, wine and food pairing because it is spring. Uh, so we're thinking green, so I thought we'd do a little green, uh, spring green couscous uh, recipe that pairs beautifully with some of the Chardonnays, especially the unoaked Chardonnays coming out of Michigan. So, okay. um, so what I've done here is I have a bowl and I've filled it with some couscous that I already cooked in advance. So, you know, couscous you just toast with a little olive oil, add some chicken stock, let it uh, absorb that chicken stock and it's ready to go. Now to remind me, is this a pasta or is that a grain? It is actually in the pasta family. It is, okay. So, yeah. It's considered a pasta. Gotcha. So uh, to that, we're going to add, um, I've already chopped up some asparagus. You know, Michigan has beautiful asparagus, um, especially in the springtime. So this is a great, uh, basically what we'll do is just toss this with olive oil, salt, and pepper, throw it in the oven, and then it's, uh, you know, five, ten minutes, it's nice and green, and then it's ready to go in the, in the dish. So I'm going to just chop up the rest of this. Okay. If you would help me, actually, we've got a lemon here. Okay. If you would zest that in the bowl, we're going to have some lemon zest there just to kind of give it some freshness as Haven't well. I asked to zest anything before. <laughs> this is kind of a big day, Dina. Uh, no, just kind of do this, right? Yeah, so you just kind of lightly rasp it on there, and then as you, you can hit it on the bowl to kind of knock the, the shavings off underneath. This is not going well. <laughs> All right. And you, you want to just get the yellow part. The white part's going to be pretty bitter, so you just kind of go around, get that yellow off, and then just hit it on the bowl there. And I'm going to go ahead and add this. Uh, That's a good skill to know. To, to zest? To zest. It's yes. impressive. You, you know, when you're entertaining, you can say, I'm just going to zest some lemon here. Probably a good way to ask somebody to prom, too. Is like, right. Hey, look, I can zest. Just just grab this with. towel behind you. There we go. So also in this, we're going to add some, uh, we've got some peas. So I'm just going to throw those in. There's about a cup of peas. You can use fresh peas or uh, you can use, uh, you know, fresh uh, that you blanch or you can use frozen peas. We've got about a half cup of uh, feta and we've got a third of a cup of chive. So all nice green flavors for spring. Also some mint. We got two tablespoons there. And then lastly, we're just going to do a little dressing here. So I've got some olive oil. Wow, this smells good. And this is minimal cooking, right? Except oh, yeah. Like this takes, the vegetables. Ex exactly. This is just a couple of minutes. So we're just going to put the uh, about a half of a lemon here, juice in the olive oil. 
All right, I think that's good. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. I think I'm fully <laughs> zested now. Yeah. <laughs> Add some garlic, some salt, and pepper. That's our little dressing. We'll just whisk this up. Pretty, pretty easy. And that goes over the top, and you said, now which one is this going to pair with? The wine? This is going to pair beautifully with the Chardonnay. So if you want to go ahead and pour some of that in those glasses there, we can I all do. have a sample. Yeah, absolutely. It's early, but you know, it's never too early for wine. <laughs> it's wine 30 somewhere, isn't it? <laughs> oh, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. So this is just a nice green couscous here that we can you can serve with fish or with chicken. That's beautiful. Um, as a side dish, you can have it with a sandwich. So it's really just an easy springtime recipe to enjoy with a glass of Michigan wine. This is a naked Chardonnay, it says. Yes, so it's unoaked. So no oak, no butteriness, just that crisp, clean I, uh, Chardonnay. I was so going to say I noticed that, but I... Did you? No, no, I wish I could say I did. Are we supposed to be eating it, or just we're just mm. drinking the wine? There's some plates here All if you'd right. like to have a sample. We had to get it, you know, taste it first, and then that, with after the food, the, the oh, it's good. power comes out, right? Right, absolutely. <laughs> well, Patrick, thank you very much. And, uh, of course, if you want more information on the uh, Rattlesnake Club and the uh, big event that's going on today, you can get that at our website at myfoxdetroit.com.